up every morning when the clock strikes eight. I'm always punctual, never, never late. With a nice cup of tea, a little run of toast, the sporting life and the winning post. I get so nice and tidy, then I toddle off to work. I do the best I can. Still, I'm only a doing what a bloke should do, cause I'm only a working man. <laughs> I'm many mouse the cheese man, there's always time for a quick nibble. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? That's nice, isn't it? How do you like to go round people's houses all day saying that? I'm many miles to cheese, man, there's always time for a quick nibble. <laughs> <laughs> if you can show me a wedge of many mouse gorgonzola, you will receive free of charge a set of mother of pearl mouse traps <laughs> and a year's free supply of an oral contradeodorant. <laughs> I had to go Finchley, all the way to Finchley, dressed like this. I got on a bus, asked the conductress for the Faulkney one, they're still trying to get her down off the roof. <laughs> then I met a cat. <laughs> then I met a cat. <laughs> Drank me up a back alley and played with me for the <laughs> Bad enough last week, chocolate biscuit man, last week. Knocked at the door before I could say a word, a lady picked me up, dipped me in a cup of tea and bit half me ear over <laughs> At the time before that, silver king, the metal polish man. And chromium plated me all over. Just left one tiny hole so as I could get me something. <laughs> Walked three steps in a depot and I got struck by lightning. Oh. <laughs> Have you any idea what this is doing to my dignity and self-respect? Ah, Mr. Clark, how did it go? Well, I, I got the job all right, Mr. Pugh, and the money's good, but I don't know what the wife's going to say. After all, I've been a white-collar worker all my life, and now I'm going to dig ditches. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, I mean, I don't mind personally for myself, but I think the wife might think it's a bit below my dignity. Then she would be a very foolish woman. As Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. What matters to you is that you are in gainful employment. You have fought your way clear of the heavy hand of sloth and found a new propensity. So, let's have no more talk about self-respect. There is no job that man can conceive of that does not contain within it the seeds of human dignity. Oh. Oh, thank you very much. I'll remember that. I'll tell her that. It'll make all the difference. It will. And remember, always walk tall. Walk tall. Walk straight and look the world right in the eye. Then I was Mr. Jolly Pop, the walk-in lollipop. <laughs> St. Albans, first stop. Great big halo of candy floss round me head and a broomstick stuck up me vertebrae. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked all the way to St. Albans in the middle of an heat wave. I left Marble Arch as Mr. Jolly Pop, the walk-in lollipop. Time I got to St. Albans, I was sticky dicky to fly <laughs> Well, what do you expect me to do about it? Give me back my dignity, Mr. Pooh. Pew. Pardon? Pew. Pew. As Shakespeare said, all the water turns. All the men and women merely players. Merely players. I wonder how many of us would be if we could have read the script first. 
versauft mit dem Motelli. The paint and a mass whiskers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the new ladies. <laughs> and on with the working remnant. Of the working man because I want to walk home. <laughs> walk straight and look about in a heart. <laughs> well, why don't you then? Why don't I what? Why don't you walk tall? I can't. Why not? I'm too little. <laughs> now look, don't you come in here talking to me about dignity. What do you know about dignity? 983 jobs in 20 years? And a right unholy, unmitigated, unparalleled, unnecessary, undignified galley moffrey you have made of all of them. And you have the audacity to come in here with the word dignity on your lips? Go home and wash your mouth out with soap and water. You obnoxious, insipid, insignificant little malefactor! <laughs> But, um, what's a gallimoffery? <laughs> a gallimoffery is a horrible, stinking mess. And that's what you are. A horrible, hairy little gallimoffery. Keep Britain tidy. Emigrate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't do that. <clears throat> I can't desert my country at the time of need. I, too, can be part of the great e industrial rejuvenation. <laughs> Did you see this week, last week? <laughs> They're doing a repeat of it next week. <laughs> it was all about the building of a mighty ocean going ship. We saw everything from the drawing board up. First we saw the chief designer sitting on a blueprint playing with his calipers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the kill hole! Over here, lads, he said, making a chalk mark on the river bank. <laughs> and out of a nearby shed swept 1,400 proud and broady keelholders, all carrying a great big lump of ship. <laughs> <laughs> Careful there, lads, cried the foreman, remember it's for export. <laughs> then down went the keel. And up went the sides, and on went the deck, and in went the furniture. And as if by magic on the great grey hulk appeared the mast, and then the chimneys, and the riveters were riveting, and the carpenters were carpeting, and the painters were painting, and the engineers were engineering, the riggers were rigging, the caulkers were caulking, every man proud to be playing his part in the building of this mighty ocean-going vessel. Suddenly, one morning, there was a deafening hush. What's that? <laughs> Whatever's that? Cried a man who had nothing at all to do with it. <laughs> Having expected to be awakened in a quite different fashion. <laughs> and along came a great black limousine and out specked a man with a red cloak trimmed with vermin. <laughs> A chain round his neck. That's all, flags, cried the foreman. Be Gavin Haldade. Haul her sail in her. And he pushed a button. And down below, a little light went on, and the head launcher cut the string. And slowly at first, and with gathering speed, the mighty ocean grey hand slipped her leash and slid into the turgid waters of the cloud. <laughs> And with one voice, a great cry went up from the multitude. She floats, she floats. <laughs> <laughs> he's a jolly fellow, he's a jolly fellow. Wish me luck and to wave me goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Gracie. <laughs> she married an Italian, you know. <laughs> and with Greenock fading behind her into a Scotch mist. <laughs> she 
We steam majestically towards the new world, our decks are thrown with happy society passengers. Engineers engineering, the purser's pursering, guess the ship's not his madam, only half can ago. <laughs> and the steward stood in captain's compliments, would you join him under the table, miss? <laughs> And all too soon, the Statue of Liberty hove into view. It was given to them by the French. You know. <laughs> and to the surprise and delight of many New Yorkers, a great ship steamed majestically straight up Fifth Avenue. <laughs> they gave her a ticky-tacky welcome. Britain has done it again! <laughs> Honest, Mr. Pooh. Pew. Pew. <laughs> it was wonderful to see every man playing his part in this great ship, which will carry the fair word of British endeavour to the four corners of the seven seas. I want to play a part in that. Play, find me, find me a part in a thing like that. By George, you deserve it too. Which part would you like to play? I want to be the man who pushes the button. The man. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's up. You're up. That's what's up. Put me down, dear. <laughs> Beaches and Company, wholesale horticulturalists. Ah. Now there's a job that ought to contain the seas of dignity. <laughs> Beaches and Company, wholesale horticulturalist, there's a job that ought to contain the seeds of dignity, I said, you know. <laughs> Get out of my sight, you horrible little freak! My heart. My heart. That is a very irresponsible thing for a well-read man to say. Different is as different does. In the land of the Mogadites, <laughs> all the inhabitants had one blue eye and one brown. One day a stranger came among them with two blue eyes and they stuck him on a podium <laughs> <laughs> and exhibited him as an object of reticule. <laughs> I'm a daffodil man. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on higher vows and hills when suddenly I spied a crowd, a host of golden. Ah. Now then, madam, if you can supply the missing word and show me one packet of pedigree polyamphor seeds, you receive the golden daffodil handshake, which comprises one specially selected beaches tulip bowl wrapped up in a five pound note. If you can slow me two packets of pedigree polyamphor seeds, you will receive in addition one year's free supply of beaches. Up, John, fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can show me three packets, you will receive a long, plain record of Malcolm Muggeridge reading Quiet Flows the Dawn. <laughs> and the grand mystery prize. If you think I'm going around people's houses all day long dressed like that, Santa, you've got another thing coming. Give me my cards. Oh, but you haven't started yet, Mr. Exactly! <laughs> exactly! And I'm not going to look at me. <laughs> look like Natty in the arena with a foot stuck in a flower box. <laughs> Give me my cards. Well, what exactly is your objection, Mr. Drake? This, this lot. <laughs> it's self-evident, isn't it? This. I said to Mr. Pooh. Pew. Pew! 
I will not do a job unless it was conducive to the dignity of the labour. But, but Mr. Drake, you do look dignified. <laughs> Talk like a <laughs> <laughs> galley muffery. <laughs> I look about as dignified as a Swiss mountain guide with his skis stuck up his anorak. Give <laughs> <laughs> my cards. Yeah, but haven't you been following the adventures of our daffodil man on the back of our seed packet? We represent him as the flower of manhood, sowing the seeds of dignity and adventure right across the world. For instance, on our nasturtium packets, we just sent him off to Mars. Dressed like this? Well, of course. <laughs> You're frightening the life ahead of him. Give <laughs> my cards. Very well. Good day, Mr. Drake. Good day. Oh, Mr. Drake. <laughs> if you have any difficulty in sleeping tonight, uh, try counting daffodil pluckers jumping over a five-bar gate. Right. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Try counting daffodil pluckers jumping over a five-bar gate. What's, um... What's daffodil pluckers doing jumping over the <laughs> They are going home. They also have got their cards. 25,000 daffodil pluckers all out of work because of your damned foolish pride. I can't. How am I responsible for 25,000 daffodil pluckers being out of work? <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Drake, and let me explain. Today is the 3rd of March, the day on which the daffodil man cometh, and he will go on comething for the next three weeks. <laughs> now then, how do we let the housewife, how does the housewife let the daffodil man know that she wants him to call? <laughs> well, she, uh, that is the housewife. Hmm? has to put a vase of daffodils in her window. Exactly. And our experts have estimated that during the next three weeks, three and a half million housewives will buy three and a half million bunches of daffodils to put in their front windows to welcome the daffodil man. Three and a half million housewives. <coughs> and I'm the only daffodil man. <coughs> I'm going to have to go a bit, and I? <laughs> Top Wack will only be able to visit 27 or 28 of them. Well, we, we can't all be lucky, Mr. Drake. We can't all be lucky. <laughs> and you will have the consolation of knowing that you have made a magnificent gesture. Now, does that make you feel any happier? Well, yes, uh, in a way, yes, except that do <coughs> Just one thing that is confusing uh, me. I understood the object of this campaign was for the selling of the packets of the pedigree polyampha seeds. Oh, indeed it is, Mr. Drake. We hope to sell many millions of them with the help of your good self. Help of my good self, yes. Um, but, you see, I do not wish to uh, think that you that I am uh, mucking uh, with your metab uh, in any... Uh, <laughs> Nor should you think that I was contraphallic, uh, uh, considering that... Uh, what's 25,000 daffodil pluckers got to do with it? We also sell oh. daffodils, <laughs> Mr. Drake. <laughs> Just a thought. Why don't you change it? And if the housewife let me show to me a bunch of daffodils for the first prize, two bunches for the second prize, and three for the third prize. Well, that's a very good sort, Mr. Drake. Uh, but then, how would you know at which house to call? Well, she has to put a packet of pedigree polyanthus easy in the window, see? <laughs> Perhaps you've been mm, close to your subject for too long, and uh, not uh, sort of investigated every nick and cracky uh, of it. Uh, <laughs> no. No. Now, that wouldn't be quite fair now, would it? No, no, I've never thought of that. Perhaps you're right. I'm very sorry. There's no need to be sorry, Mr. Drake. We can't all be perfect. And remember, you are about to spread hope and happiness all over England. The Daffodil Man cometh. Are you on? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Where's me first port of call? Coventry. Coventry. <laughs> Daffodil Man cometh.
Coventry? <laughs> uh, straight up the M1 and turn left. <laughs> you know, one moment, uh, Mr. Drake. You will, uh, you will need this. <laughs> What's that? Whatever's that? Well, it's a pogo stick. <laughs> what do you expect me to do with it? Ah. <laughs> Well, we don't expect you to walk all the way to Coventry, Mr. Drake. You don't expect me to pogo stick all the way? <laughs> of course we do. It's a most essential part of the campaign. Not only because it will be symbolic of a daffodil eternally springing up from the warm bosom of Mother Earth, but also for another and much more important reason. We also, also sell, sell pogo sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Daffodil man. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on higher vows and hills when suddenly I spied a crowd. A host of golden. Now then, madam, if you can supply the missing word and show me one packet of pedigree polyemphases, you'll receive the golden daffodil handshake, which comprises one specially selected beaches tulip bulb wrapped up in a fat pound note. If you can show me two packets, you receive in addition one year's free supply of beaches. Up, John Fertilizer. <laughs> And for free packets, you get a long playing record of Malcolm Muggeridge reading Quiet Flows the Don. And the grand mystery prize. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Good morning, madam. <coughs> I need daffodil. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on hard vows of hills when suddenly I spied a crowd. <laughs> Here, Dad, come and have a look at this. Now, what the hell's going on? What are you up this time of the morning, boy? Well, look, Dad, down in the street, that fella. Oh, <laughs> God help us. <laughs> hey, hey, mother, go on, get up, get yourself out of it. Come and have a look at this fella down in the street. <laughs> What's wrong? Whatever's wrong, Henry, get away from that window, standing there, you shirt, you catch a death of cold. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet, I'll tell you what I come here for. I'll spit it out before you wilt. Be quiet. Oh, there's no need for you to laugh anymore. You've done it. I'm finished. I try, but I can't go on any longer. All I've ever wanted was for a chance to do my best. All I've ever needed was for a man to pat me on the shoulder and say, well done. But it never goes that way. All people ever do is laugh at me. And it's nice to see people laugh and great to see people happy. Makes me feel good when they say, here's old Charlie, he's always good for a laugh, but you don't feel so good when you realise that's all you're good for. That's all you're ever going to be good for. Are you going to spend your life an object of ridicule? See, you have stopped laughing then. 
people are funny like that. You see, you see they do bad things and, and they say they're sorry and uh, they imagine that this makes them better, but it doesn't. It's too late. But you need feel no remorse, you see, because you put an end to my sufferings. I'm finished. Finished. I say, song. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or vales and hills when suddenly I spied a crowd, a host of golden. <laughs> that went well, didn't it? Oi! What about your dignity then? You've been shouting and hollering about it all day long and now you're skulking off like a coward. Get up there and have another go. Wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high of Valadil. Suddenly I spied a crowd, a host of golden. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute. I know what's doing it. It's the poem. They don't like Wordsworth. Try him with a bit of Walter de la Mer. <laughs> someone. Someone. They love that. <laughs> someone. By Walter de la Mer. Someone came and knocking at my small, small door. Someone came and knocking. I'm sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I opened, I listened, I looked from left to right, but not was there a stirring in a still, still. <laughs> Well, go on, then. I should go home, son, before you get hurt. <laughs> I wandered lonely as a cloud. <laughs> the floats on high of vales and hills. When suddenly I spied a crowd, a host of golden... Daffodils. Congratulations. <laughs> You've won the golden daffodil handshake, which comprises one tulip bowl wrapped up in a five-pound note. <coughs> one year's free supply of beaches up, John. <laughs> one drop to a thousand gallons. And the LP record of Malcolm Muggeridge reading quiet flows to Don. And the grand mystery prize. <laughs> Bring it in!
What the hell's that? <laughs> that is specially bred. <laughs> By Beaches and Company Wholesale Horticulturalists. <laughs> that is a ring-tailed amaryllivore. <laughs> What's an amaryllivore? A daffodil weed. <laughs> I'm only a working 